The next gen consoles could be delayed because of the insane RAM prices. So if you've been following the news at all recently over the last month or so, the last two months, it's been a lot about RAM prices, whether you're looking to build a PC, upgrade the RAM on your PC, buy any sort of tech, RAM prices are having major effects on how much items do cost. And this is going to continue now for at least another year or so, maybe going all the way into the end of 2027, 2028. This is what some of the analysis are saying. And this would coincide exactly with the release of the PlayStation 6 and the next Xbox from what we're hearing through the rumors. Now, there's a lot that's happening within the next generation, and we've talked about this here. I think it's pretty exciting where things are going, where there's going to be just more choices overall for gamers on where and how they want to play, mainly on the Xbox side, but it does sound like on the PlayStation side, they're going to be doing some more things as well. If you do start to believe the rumors where they will have multiple SKUs, they'll have a handheld, and you're going to have that access to be able to take your games on the go, which I think is great. Handhelds, the PC gaming handhelds future and the market has really shown that people want those. They want to spend the money on them. They spent over thousands of dollars. When you look at stuff like the Lenovo Legion Go 2, which sold out the Xbox Ally X was sold out. And yes, you can make the argument that they don't allocate a ton of inventory. That's why they did sold out. But there's obviously a market there, whether it's large or very niche. There is a lot of people there that will want to go and buy these devices. And I think that will continue. They're going to be able to sell these to a segmented market that are good with spending more money for more power. And I think this could translate over to the consoles as well, especially if the consoles are coming out as being more expensive. We've seen the PS5 Pro come out, which was high up there in the prices, $700, $750 when it did launch. I think that's going to be the base going forward for the next generation. So you'll have like a base PlayStation 6 potentially coming in at $700 at launch, maybe even more. And then you'll have the Xbox that they're making themselves at Microsoft that potentially is going to be pushing even higher than that. Some of the rumors are saying $1,000, but obviously we don't know. And then they're going to be offering, it sounds like, some OEM products where you're going to be able to still get into the next generation for a cheaper price and get that console-like experience with the Xbox full screen experience, your PC games, get your console games. To me, it is all very exciting. But when is this going to happen and do we need it right now? A lot of people think that we don't need this right now. These consoles still are fine. They still play games great. And we can wait many more years before jumping into the next gen. And there may not be a choice now because of the RAM prices. This is what is going on here in terms of the rumors as to the potential delays for the next generation. They say the industry as a whole is concerned about RAM availability. Here's why the PlayStation 6 and the Xbox Next could be delayed beyond 2027, 2020. Eight specifically all has to do with the RAM. They say the current RAM prices, however, are only the beginning as not only prices for many products are expected to increase next year, but product launches could also be delayed until the situation is normalized. Even the PS6 and the Xbox Next may not be immune to this and could be delayed beyond their 2027, 2028 release window. This comes via Tom Henderson from Insider Gaming in this new report saying that while consoles have traditionally been subsidized to a certain extent in the past it seems like ram availability and price increases will mean that the next generation of consoles which were already believed to be much higher price than previous generations could be extortionate and because of this he's saying that this current situation has led sony and microsoft to debate whether the ps6 and the xbox next could be delayed saying that ram manufacturers will be able to build out their infrastructure to produce more ram allowing for prices to drop so this is a Right now, obviously, very early, very just rumor driven as to whether this would be the case. I mean, even the launch of the next generation, what exactly that is going to be is still all just rumors. Clearly, nothing has been confirmed. We have heard from Xbox themselves talking about the future of their consoles, how it's going to be extremely powerful PC console hybrid. They've really been hinting at that, which means you're going to get access to your Xbox console. And then you're also going to get that PC loaded onto it. So basically you're getting access to every single game and that will require significant power from the box itself. Obviously they're going to have to upgrade the Ram over what they currently have right now. And I'm sure when these consoles are being designed, 
and they're being manufactured and they're getting ready to launch a next generation. This is years in advance. I mean, this basically starts right after the last generation launches. They're, they're beginning to start working on what is going to be coming years down the road. So we don't know exactly where they are within the production cycle. How much product have they purchased? How Have they signed all of the deals for the RAM? And does that have to all be honored even though all the RAM prices are going up? These are all questions that we do not know. But the bigger question for the gamers, I would say, is 2027 is a year away. Do we need a new console in 2027? At the end of it, at the beginning of it, we're hearing rumors potentially that there could be a new console coming out at the end of 2026. Is this at all needed or are people still OK here with playing on the Xbox Series X, S and the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5 Pro? I would venture to guess that the majority of people are completely happy to wait. Like they would be happy to wait until 2030. I mean, you take a look at specifically the PS4, PS5 numbers. I mean, the PS4 is still being supported because so many people have not jumped over to the PlayStation 5. And this all just comes down to the economics of everything and how expensive things have gotten. And a lot of most people, contrary to what you see on social media from the console warriors and the people who are continuously talking about the power and counting pixels on a daily basis, most people just want to play their games. And if that console can run a game they're okay with it really no matter how it runs the game as long as they can get out there and play it and the ps4 can still play a lot of games that have been coming out so they're gonna stay there until they're being forced to transfer over to the ps5 and then when that time comes generally what happens is the price of the next gen console is significantly cheaper but that's not what we have seen this generation which leads me to believe that less and less people are going to be going over to the new consoles when they do come out. You take a look at right now, the price of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, if they were to launch the next gen, the PS6 and the Xbox Next, we'll just call it that for now, at $700, $800, most people are not going to go and transfer over that. The amount of people that will stay on the last gen is going to be higher than any previous generation simply because the prices have gone up and the current prices are not dropping. And they're not going to be dropping because of what's going on within the market, the RAM prices, and, and everything and, and everything else going on that's affecting tariffs, the where these consoles are being manufactured, the production costs going up everywhere. The prices are not dropping. The companies are less likely to subsidize them as well. So the amount of people that are going to go to buy a PS6 or an Xbox Next, it's going to be coming less and less at launch. So that's the, what I'm predicting is going to happen, which is why you're seeing the pivot from these from PlayStation and Xbox specifically of getting their games out in more places, giving more options on how to play these games, whether that is through cloud streaming or whether that is through a subscription service. All of these things play into the fact that they know the console sales, the console market is stagnating. The PS5 is sold very well. But it has not surpassed the PS4, and I don't think it will surpass the PS PS4 by any significant margin. And the reality is, the line needs to continuously go up, especially if the production costs of games are continuously going up, and if people are playing less games. And that's what we are seeing in the numbers, that people are just staying in the black hole games. So being able to subsidize the console through software sale is not becoming as lucrative of a business as it used to be. All of these things play into where the market is heading. And I don't think necessarily it is a bad thing, but if you are somebody who only cares about the hardware, it is becoming more luxury. And a lot of people are going to just choose different ways to go out there and play their games with the more options that are out there. So waiting until 2030 for next generation, I think for most people, they're okay with it. They're, they're going to be completely fine with that. Because not everybody cares about every single pixel and having a steady 60 frames per second. I would say actually the majority of people probably do not care. If you get off of social media and then you start looking at how many gamers there are out there and how many people focus on that stuff. But if we do take a look at some of the comments from this article, this person says the down clock 3700X or whatever CPU in the PS5 will struggle with certain games. I'd still be surprised if GTA 6 is anything more than 30, 40 FPS, probably with dips. And if that's the case, still, they'll also run out there in droves by GTA 6 to play to 30 or 40 FPS. They both need to close up shop consoles without physical media or are scam. We're going back to the 90s. Won't be getting a new console for a while then. Said, I always said the PS6 was 2028. 
That was no reason to make PS6 in 2027, but all the silly morons claimed it'd be 2026 or 2027. PS5 state is really good. There's no price drops, no sales drops, no reason to make a PS6 before 2028. And I think that is one of the things too. There has been no sales or price drops at all for these consoles. So you put out a brand new console and then you're still selling the last generation at uh, stupid prices. I think that would just absolutely kill some of the mainstream casual market for buying up these consoles yes you'll have the enthusiasts that go out and buy everything up day one but that can't sustain the console market it just simply can't because there's not enough people out there who are the enthusiasts who are willing to drop anything on day one go down here this person says this should be resolved in the next 12 months i mean hopefully but we will see this person says delay 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 what a generation this has been at least I am getting my money's worth after blowing 800 on a PS5 Pro and an Xbox that just loves to collect dust. And the irony is that the delays, like with the devs, can finally get around to optimize their games and have a longer time to breathe. Heck, this could really be good for the industry, but who am I kidding? So, yeah, we will see. A lot of people are just, the sentiment is, yeah, they don't care. They couldn't care less as to whether these consoles do get delayed they'll just continue playing on what they have and then obviously if you have pc or, or st other stuff out there i mean we we did see the nintendo switch 2 come out this year at 450 dollars, and that was a big jump from the nintendo switch one but that thing still sold crazy in fact i think it's actually beating the switch one but that's still only 450 dollars it's not 800 dollars. it's not 900 dollars. not thousand dollars it's still 450 higher than the first switch but still within that reasonable price range for consoles where you would attract a more broad market who would go out and pick this thing up within the first year. When you're starting to hit 700, 800, 900, that market shrinks more and more and more. And these companies are looking at this and thinking, yeah, we're going to put this out there, spend all that marketing money. We're not going to beat our sales from the last generation. But what is the point of that investment, especially now when the games are going into more places and there's more ways to access them? And they're not thinking about subsidizing the console nearly as much by selling their software, which has also gone up a lot in price in production. The other thing that could come in here and help, at least with the development of these games, is going to be AI. And is that bubble going to burst? It's another big question because that's what's driving the prices up for RAM. So there's so many things here. But me personally, with all of that talking about where I think it could go, my personal opinion as to whether we should get a next generation or whether I want a next generation for 2027 or 2026 at the end of this year, I would be okay with it. I would go out there and purchase the box itself on day one. I am one of those enthusiasts that... Yeah, I want what's next. I want to see what the next tech is and how is this going to be implemented and how games are going to run. But at the same time, if it doesn't happen, I'll just be okay with playing on everything else that I do have. I mean, I still even play like old retro games, so it's not the end of the world, but I would be one of those people who does go out and buy the next gen consoles on day one. But on the video there, let me know your thoughts about all of this. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. If you're new here, hit the subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.